She's only 4'10". She weighed 90 pounds at the time. She was a single mom heading to the grocery store at night right down the street from her home. And he jumped out of the bushes with a knife, abducted her, and she described for me in graphic detail how he brutally raped her. And that's how I was conceived. She said there was blood and dirt on the floor and on the tables. And basically she went into the back door of an OBGYN's office. And it was just filthy. And those conditions and the fact that it was illegal caused her to back out, as it did with most women. And then it was arranged for her to meet with a more expensive abortionist. And this time she was to meet someone at night by the Detroit Institute of Arts, ironically next to the Thinker statue. And someone would approach her, say her name, blindfold her, put her in the back seat of a car, then take her and abort me. Then blindfold her again and drop her back off. And she was told that if there were any complications, that they might have to keep her overnight. She was terrified for her safety, but she was prepared to go through with it. She spoke with this abortion doctor on the phone, expressed concern for her safety, and he called her stupid. And she said, okay, you're gonna call me names, just forget it. Well, he went on to swear at her profusely, and she finally just hung up the phone. When I described the back alley conditions to people that my birth mother had to go through, I'll hear responses like, oh, that's just so awful. Your birth mother should have had to have gone through that in order to have been able to abort you. <laughs> like, that's compassionate? Because I understand that they think that they're being compassionate, but that's pretty cold-hearted from where I stand, don't you think? Because that's my life that they're so callously talking about. She's okay, life went on for her. But I would have been killed through this brutal abortion. And every now and then I'll have people, especially during Q&A on university campuses, someone will raise their hand and say, yeah, I just want to say that I have no problem looking you in the eyes and saying to you that I think that your mother should have been able to abort you, and I fully understand that that would mean that you'd be dead right now. Yeah, I just want to say, I have no problem doing that. <sighs> wow, okay, well, here you go, everybody. Here's someone who, out of their care for women, that they would say such a thing to a woman like me. <laughs> Can you feel the love? Because I'm not feeling it. And, and that's the thing is they talk about how much they care about women. But they could care less about me and I challenge them, now tell me, what good is my right to anything as a woman if I don't have my right to life? It's so ironic that so-called feminists are the first to argue that women are pretty much weak and pathetic and can't handle very much. They'll say things like, well, how can you expect a woman to have to carry a baby? How can you expect a rape victim to have to go through that? How can you expect a woman to have to carry a baby who's just gonna die? You know, as if everyone else is immortal. <laughs> and they shortchange women because they don't women, they don't give women credit for being resilient. They don't give women credit for being capable of great love. They don't give women credit for being strong and for being stronger than they think. Instead, they just have low expectations. And I think that that's been a tremendous disservice to women and tragically has resulted in the deaths of millions of babies. It's not just children who are conceived in rape who are demonized and stigmatized and devalued, but it's the other so-called hard cases, children who have special needs, um, families who are given a poor in utero diagnosis, whether it's because of their own health or because of the health issues of the child. And first of all, whenever I hear that term, the hard cases. You know who the hard cases really are? The hard cases are all those people with the hardened hearts who cannot recognize 
the incredible value of every human being. The people who are hard cases because they think that a person's value is based upon what they can offer society, that your value is based upon your successes or your failures, or your burdens or your benefits, your assets versus your liabilities. They are the hard cases. Our second adopted child, Cassie, was born with special needs. And when I did research regarding her particular genetic disorder, it was called velocardiofacial syndrome, otherwise known as DeGeorge syndrome. All I kept finding online was how to detect it in utero so that you could have the opportunity to abort. And most of those babies were aborted. Just like with Down syndrome babies, 90% are aborted today. That's been the cure, is to just simply kill them. And I think it's just so awful and tragic that anyone would have looked at my daughter Cassie and said that she wasn't as good, that it wasn't worth going through that. Let me tell you, it was an honor to take care of her. And I definitely had the sense that it was one of the most important things that I'd ever done with my life. She was precious, she had value. She spent 12 days in Children's Hospital and 21 days in our home. At the hospital, we had doctors, nurses, social workers, our adoption attorney, the adoption caseworker, all saying to us, you know, you don't have to bring her home. Nobody would blame you. And I, I was so offended. This is our child. How could you talk about my child like that? We're her parents. I was there for her first ultrasound. I had been praying for her from the time we met her birth mother, which was right after she found out she was pregnant. How could you speak of my child that way? It's because they have hardened hearts. They're the hard cases. And a cardiologist took Cassie off of oxygen when she wasn't ready to be. And she stopped breathing. We did CPR, tried to resuscitate her, and she was resuscitated a couple of times and then they couldn't keep her blood pressure up any longer. But when we went to the second hospital where she was transferred to, it was actually a Catholic hospital, after they resuscitated her, they could see that she had significant brain damage. Her, her hand was jumping. And we had the doctor telling us that we should just discontinue the epinephrine and, and just let her go. Don't try to keep her blood pressure up any longer. And I asked the most intelligent question you could ask, which is what are the odds she could pull through? And this doctor said to us, well, you, you have to consider even if she pulled through, what the quality of her life would be. And I said, I don't care. We will take care of her. And this doctor said, well, you have to understand, she'd have some level of retardation. I said, I already knew that she would with this particular disorder. We will take care of her. And then she went on to continue to try to pressure me. And she said to me, well, are you Christians? And she said, because I am too. And I thought, well, good for you. And I had to tell this doctor to back off. And they could not keep her blood pressure up any longer. I held her, her birth mother held her, and then she died in my husband's arms. And it was absolutely the most difficult thing we'd ever been through in our lives, but it was an honor to take care of her. And we have peace of mind that we valued her life and that we were not the cause of her death. It would have been far more difficult to overcome it all if we had caused her death. And that's what I see from friends who have miscarried late. Um, I have friends who uh, went to a funeral of a baby where the baby's umbilical cord was triple wrapped around the baby's neck. And 
just like when I went through a couple of miscarriages, I lost a couple of babies in, in utero, they all say the same thing. They would have given anything to have had even a moment to hold that baby alive. And it is the biggest ripoff to suggest that that's not worth it, that it's not worth going through that. They don't know my daughter's value and they definitely don't even know their own worth, which is so sad. These children have value and it just reeks of eugenics to suggest that the world would be a better place if we just get rid of them all. And then we have less compassion on people who choose life. And we see that all the time. I have numerous friends with children with Down syndrome who share the same story that even in their church, after giving birth, they brought their child to church with them and were holding their baby in their arms. And people looked at them and asked, didn't you take the test? <laughs> like, what are you, stupid? Why would you want that if you didn't have to? You didn't, you didn't take the test. <sighs> Our society is so hardened today over the children who Jesus called the least of these.